quick. I need you to stand behind the mic. I'm sorry, Lauren. We have to be near the podium? Are we? Yeah, well, you can hold the mic if you like. I'm not a Just, podium speaker. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I need a ball. <laughs> All right, good evening, everybody. Before we actually start, I would like to take a moment and invite you to join me in giving a huge round of applause to our teachers who have created these amazing As well as a thank you, a huge, huge thank you to the Alessi group and to all of those uh, wonderful ladies who have helped to put this together. Dr. Lauren Zabinski from the Department of Education and I just wanted to jump up here real quick to just welcome everyone and say thank you for attending tonight. Uh, this work that the Department of Education with uh, partnership with the Alessi Group has been um, happening for year, years now. We started back in 2013 when Arizona joined a consortium to bring to our state a formative assessment tool for kindergarten through third grade. Uh, that was a huge shift, a big change, and a huge initiative for our state to become part of. So not only is the work happening at the department in bringing and finalizing that tool and bringing that to fruition, but we recognized that we needed to start bringing that to conversation across the field. That happens in professional development as well as face-to-face -face interaction. Recognizing that that is a huge task, uh, we turned to our friend, uh, Dr. Isela Garcia, and asked her for her help. And she graciously volunteered and said, yeah, we can definitely pick up that scope of work. And years later, here we are, uh, having some great success, not only with some conferences and groups of teachers across our state, but these ladies here have visited every corner of Arizona and back again, helping kindergarten teachers reassemble their rooms, help to talk to administrators and make some of these changes, which then is helping with the conversation of bringing this formative assessment to our state. So it's all very exciting, um, especially now at this point, as we are finalizing our research um, and our field testing with our KDI, with uh, 42, 48 excuse me, teachers across the state and finalizing our implementation plan and being able to say that we will have this tool accessible and available across the state in the 2017 and 2018 school year. So it is coming, it is very exciting, right? Yes. So just a quick thank you again for attending and being here and being part of this. It's very exciting. Keep an ear out and an eye out for more information as we finalize even more resources in that implementation plan. And at this point, I want to turn it over to uh, the real team of the hour um, and introduce Dr. Isela Garcia. Okay, if you know me, you know I'm not a podium speaker. So this is kind of interesting for me. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone here today. Uh, this work has been, it, I, I didn't know when I was first asked to do this that it was gonna feel like moving mountains. And so I am thankful to everyone who's been a part of this, but we could not do this without our Alessi group. So most of you know who we are, but I wanna take a moment um, to introduce who we are. We're a small group. We have Marisa Calderon, who does a lot of our social, our social media and our organization of, of uh, events. So there's Marisa. <laughs> We have Trudy Irusta, who, is, who takes care of all of our logistics and does a lot of, um, she, she's the person that I like to bring along with me everywhere I go because she's that, um, she buffers, you know, she like makes everything great and fabulous and, and hugs everybody when they come in. And <laughs> she, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have Regina Aldridge and Baby um, that's about to come. So Regina does kind of a lot of our technology work and a lot of helps with graphic work and um, it, uh, all what Trudy, Trudy does really logistics, she does training as well. 
We have um, Debbie Everett, who uh, uh, has recently joined us in the last year, who was an administrator. So she can speak from that administrator position in terms of what this looks like in the classroom. And then we have Veronica Peron, who just had a baby three weeks ago. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I've got two folks and, and uh, yeah, we're making sure nobody else gets pregnant. Because <laughs> this is gonna hurt us. <laughs> How are you doing that? How are you doing that, right? <laughs> Older, re uh, higher retirement age, so if you're interested. <laughs> um, we are super excited about your attendance here. Today we had um, the kind of the final uh, part of our project approach uh, with Dr. Judy Harris Helm. She has taken us through four different day, four days of intensive work around what do projects look like in the classroom. And, and why is that significant to children? It is one part of the work that we are doing. We um, have several modules, and if you want more information on that, that's at the back table. We have several <laughs> modules um, that really support the whole child. And the project approach is one way to really help children um, in terms of their goals and supporting their development, but making it real relevant and meaningful, that children have opportunities that are, that are meaningful to them. And through those experiences, we see excitement and engagement. Uh, my conversation with Amy Corvo, who's in the room somewhere here today, Amy, um, we were having a conversation about um, behavioral issues, and one of the things that comes up that teachers shared with us was that uh, behavioral issues have gone down significantly because children are engaged, they're excited about learning, and what a travesty if children are already, already disheartened about school in kindergarten that this should be the opportunity for them to become excited and see themselves as a learner, and that they have much to contribute as much as they have to receive, that we, this is a collaborative effort of learning and excitement about learning. So we are so excited that we are seeing teachers, what I call this grassroots effort, because you're, you're on the ground doing the work and you are on the floor with children and engaging and, and observing and learning through them as they're learning from you. And so I am so thankful to teachers who are willing to take this risk, because it is a risk, it is a risk. If you've taught for 15, 20 years and you've done it differently, teachers become kind of apprehensive about shifting their, even how they perceive their, their perceptions of children's learning. And so I am thankful to those teachers um, who have, have been a part of this process. And as we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do for this Kinder Mixer, we really considered the stories, the stories that we get. Now, a part of our grant is to reach every teacher. Well, that's been very challenging for us to reach every teacher and administrator because the unfortunate circumstance is that teachers, and I think you know that children need real experiences for learning, but we have to have conversations at a broader, with, with a broader perspective with administrators to help them understand what brain development is telling us. So part of what we are trying to do is to tell the stories of children and tell the stories of teachers. Um, one of the things that we get more than anything else is that teachers say, thank you for making teaching fun again. Thank you for re-inspiring re -inspir me to stay in the field. That to me is profound, that we have to have different conversations about children so that we are, we are connecting with teachers and then they are connecting with children in a way that aligns with the foundations of brain development. And so um, having said all that, what we are going to do is I'm going to actually um, ask Dr. Judy Harris Helm to say a few words because her work with us has been incredible and we are gonna continue to work with her because we believe so wholeheartedly in the project approach and the benefits of the project approach. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ask, I, we have some teachers and some administrators who are going to spend a few moments, a few moments, <laughs> because all of you have incredible stories, but then we'll be here all night, right? A few moments to share a story, their perspectives, um, what has been inspirational to them. Because I think it's through the stories that we start to ignite different conversations. And so having said all that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Judy Harris Helm for a few words to share with us. Thank you. Uh, isn't their work amazing? <laughs> uh, it, it is a great pleasure to be here tonight. And uh, <clears throat> the 
you know, it's it, one always wonders uh, as you come in and out, in and out, working with uh, teachers, what you accomplish. And I have to say today was, ex was really inspiring to me to see what the teachers are doing, uh, to see their interest in what's happening. Um, I want to kind of put a perspective into what I think is happening here, and I want to talk a little bit about brain development. And it's kind of where I am right now. Uh, I'm actually back in school, if you can believe that. I am back in school, even though I, I do dye my hair gray for credibility. It's not really that helpful. <laughs> but I am back in school. I'm at Johns Hopkins. And I'm in a learning, <laughs> learning in the Johns Hopkins program on um, a, a master's a certificate of advanced study, actually, um, on uh, brain and teaching. And, uh, and it's very interesting to me. And I, I want to tell you that we need to stop thinking about working with children and working with our students at any age level as a matter of just focusing on the achievement, knowledge, and skills. That's a mistake for us. Because what we understand now from the brain research, and we can look into the heads of children and students who are learning, and we can see what works and doesn't work. And we have to realize that what we need to build is 21st century learners. And you have heard that phrase again and again. But this is really what has to happen. And when you start at kindergarten and you start at pre-K, and really we should be starting at pre-K, and you think about what we're doing with children, we should be doing that looking at the long term of building mind-brain capacity. When I was born in southern Illinois, in a coal mining town, my father and mother believed that when you had a child, you got either a dumb one, a smart one, or a medium one. <laughs> and that your job as a parent or as a teacher was to accept that child the way they were and give them enough knowledge and skills to, to survive, okay? That's not true, first of all. The potential of children is really much more extensive than we thought it was. That we should look at children from all circumstances as having immense possibility of growth. But we should also realize that what we are doing with those children in these young age levels is we're building the capacity to do the higher level thinking that you are wanting them to do at third grade sixth grade, high school, and college. And if we don't build a better brain, children are going to have difficulty with that. I'm going to close with one thing. My husband has an antique car. It's a, um, it's a Crosley Hot Shot Convertible, 1949. Some of you might know what that is. Okay, so he's worked on it a great deal of time. He's tinker, tinker, tinker. Now it runs, now it's done, you know, and now we have a lot of fun with it. And we drive around on it. It's a little little sports car, okay? Uh, first, first American built sports car. So um, it, it's a lot of fun to drive. And we go all over in it, just for fun. Uh, we can't go too far because sometimes we have to push it home. But, <laughs> but we, um, one thing we don't do is we don't go on the interstate. We can't go on the superhighway. Why? Because it only goes 45 miles an hour. It can't drive fast enough to stay on the superhighway. So we are relegated to the country roads when we take out our cross lake. I am hoping that in Arizona, we aren't relegating children to stay on the country roads of knowledge and technology in the future when we should be putting them on a superhighway. And to do that, you can't tinker, you can't just tinker with a little bit and change this and change that and see the results. Because what you have to do for that Crosley is you would have to engineer a new motor and that's what I'm telling you we have to think about with children. We need to engineer a new brain. And those experiences that you provide in that kindergarten, if children are bored, if children are tuning you out, 
if all you're doing is going through finite skills that are countable, then what you're not doing is building the brain for the future. And I think what I see out here is some real brain building. And I want to thank these teachers for doing it. Thank you. Isn't she awesome? <laughs> We're so glad to be working with Judy. Um, okay, so let's get Debbie. Woo, Debbie woo. Lewandowski. From the Litchfield School District. Hi. <laughs> it's so much easier to speak to like a class of five-year-olds. <laughs> like you look at adults and you're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? Um, thank you, Gisela. Um, like she said, I'm Debbie Lewandowski. I'm from Litchfield Elementary School. This is my 20th year teaching. Um, some of you have heard this. Uh, when I started this year and I saw um, Estella's a request to do the kindergarten um, project on Facebook something told me to do it I had kind of hit a peak where I was looking into Costco to go start working I kind of was pretty much done with education so I started my year and started off at the same way I attended the two-day class I came home with my instructional coach crying because I had found what I was needing I needed this, I knew what was best practices for kids, and I had let my class in the years pass down. Kids need so much social and emotional development, they don't need worksheets every day. My position at Litchfield is I am a traditional academy teacher, saying that I teach core knowledge, which I am given a binder, it is scripted. So for the past three years, um, that is what I've done. This year, I've taken that apart. I am still teaching what my district has asked me to teach, but I have been able to marry what I know my kids need and what my district wants me to. I've been able to incorporate my core knowledge curriculum through my centers. I have 12 centers running at one time throughout my classroom. If it is my win math time, we are doing these six. If it is my ELA time, I'm doing these six. If I have a Friday, I am meshing them all together. When my kids are running them and they have the responsibility of doing it, I am able to spend one-on-one -on -one time or I pull a group of three kids. I would have never been able to do that. I am able to help each individual child by keeping an anecdotal record just by watching them do their centers. If they are writing on their desk and I see that they write their numbers backwards, I just write that down. When that kid comes to me, I flip it open. We're working one-on-one. -on -one. When it comes to progress reports, I don't have to pull them over into a checkoff sheet. I have known my kids well enough through doing my centers and applying these practices that I feel that by the end of this year, my kids are going to be off on a better start than my kids have been in the past 10 years. So I want to thank you for allowing me to do this. And thank you for making me not leave the education world. challenge this work is hard or I think um, for teachers I think it's incredibly hard because you're in the field every day trying to make changes with children uh, I know and I'll tell you why this is so important and I didn't expect to respond this way quite honestly but this work is so important because the kindergarten year is such a foundational year for children. And when I hear teachers say that my entire life has been changed, I know the impact that that has on the 30, 20, 18 children in the classroom. That that ripple widens and that they have a foundation of feeling good about their learning. So these stories, these anecdotes of um, teachers' experiences of having um, their lives changed as a result is so touching to me. And it honestly, I think my conversation with Judy today is this is why I do the work that I do. 
because some days it feels bigger and too hard, too hard to do this. And these stories that Debbie shared, it's, it's why we get up each day and we do this work. So um, next one is Judith from the Deer Valley District. That's a, that's a tough one to follow. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's a lot of pressure. Um, my name is Judith Senta. I am with the Deer Valley Unified School District. I am the K-5 Literacy Specialist. And um, I was asked to kind of share Deer Valley's journey in this. And when I first came into my position, I, I was a former kindergarten teacher and instructional coach. And I taught kindergarten for a lot of years, so it holds a very special place in my heart. Um, but when I first stepped into my position, I had um, two schools in Deer Valley. Um, one had one teacher in kindergarten that was implementing the KDI. And another um, campus had uh, some kindergarten and first grade teachers that were doing the KDI. And they invited me out. They wanted to share with me their experiences. And it was fascinating for me to listen to them talk with such passion about how they were able to approach, approach their day and structure a learning environment where they were allowed to attend to the whole child. And I, I sat back and kind of paused and wondered, going, when, when did we stop? attending to the whole child. Um, but it really hit me that when the Common Core moved in and attention to high stakes testing moved in, we, we put all our attention into this rigor demand and forgot about all these other aspects that helps a child to develop. And it's true. They lost the ability to attend to that whole child. So it kind of fascinated me to dig a little deeper and I had the pleasure of going to one of Dr. Garcia's um, trainings on ELA literacy, and I was in love. And I was like, who can I talk to? Where can I find out? Where can I go? And um, came back and really pushed this out across our district to get more teachers on board. And for us, the KDI has been a tool to really help transform teachers' approach to the classroom. So in this year, after um, the pilot, in the field test, Deer Valley now has eight schools that are implementing. We have a total of 32 teachers implementing. Um, we've had Dr. Garcia out and doing a development on social and emotional constructs. And as um, you've heard stories and you will hear more stories, they walk away with just wonder and joy and a revived sense of the passion of their work. And um, her training had her last training, when she came out to our kindergarten teachers and talked to them, one of my kindergarten teachers came up and was crying, just saying how much she appreciated this opportunity. Teacher after teacher emailed me, thank you, this has been the best training we've been at. We are now feeling like we have permission to attend to really the whole child. And so um, I ran to my super, um, associate superintendent and said, really, we need her to train everybody. Because it's not just kindergartners that need to, um, kindergarten teachers that need to hear about this. Everybody needs to know about how we interact with children. Either bring them up in all of their aspects of their thinking and their problem solving and their relationships and their social constructs, um, or it kind of tears them apart. And so it is a passion of mine. I, I really truly hope that this work gets funded and continues to get funded and, and broadens for Deer Valley, it's our mission to um, continue to embed this learning into our, our trainings district-wide. I've been embedding it into all of our trainings for K-3 teachers. And um, we have Dr. Garcia coming out again and hope that in the upcoming year we'll be able to onboard more, more schools, more teachers. Because truly, um, as it's been stated, laying that foundation for young learners sets the stage for years to come. And um, I do have a, a saying I use with the teachers, and it's kind of like the un, un, I don't say it out loud, but I say it, and it is a burn all the worksheets attitude. Um, <laughs> and I say it all the time, I'm like, stop the insanity and burn the worksheets. We don't need them. We don't need them. So, um, it's a continued mission. It's something we're going to continue to work on spreading and spreading that word about really taking care and raising these good problem solvers and thinkers um, so that they're ready to compete in the Thank you. Thank you. I love it when we
when we can get administrators on board because that, that's where change can really occur in such a greater way. Um, Paula Colomore. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you about Paula quickly. Paula has been um, on this journey since our very first social and emotional um, development session, which was, what, two school years ago? Yeah. So she jumped on board um, that long ago and has been such a, an incredible advocate for us. Um, and she's from the Mesa School District. Hello, um, my name is Paula Collymore and I teach kindergarten in the Mesa Public School District. Um, the kindergarten experience, I'm laughing because as Acela was talking a little while ago, she kept using words that I'd actually written down that I wanted to make sure I used. Um, so it was sort of funny because she was basically saying how I feel. But the kindergarten experience has expired, inspired me to ask for and acquire developmentally appropriate resources for my classroom. Resources including a water table, a sociodramatic play area, a light table, a puppet theater, and these new resources have provided my students further opportunities to grow and explore independently. Uh, since I tr have started trying to implement strategies presented by the kindergarten experience team, I've had so many amazing um, and eye-opening moments. Last year, I had a student who wasn't a top performer on assessments, but my class started participating in STEM activities and he became the shining star. Uh, he used words like platform and stabilizers as he was trying to explain to his peers how to build the structures. His team was introduced to challenging vocabulary, but from a peer's perspective. His structures were all very successful. Uh, I know she said to just share one story, but like she said, I've been with it since the beginning and I have a lot of really good short ones. Um, I had a parent approach me last year to ask about my calming area. She said her daughter said she wished they had one at home. And after explaining to the parent that her child was able to take a breather on her own terms, um, the mother went out to create that support system at home. Um, her daughter was much better at controlling her impulses by the end of that year. Uh, my students have no reservations about asking me to change our environment or create new materials for our classroom. They believe it is a joint venture. Um, I had a student this year ask me to make a 100 chart like the classroom one to take home. As soon as he said that, everybody wanted one. So I was there till like eight o'clock that night trying to prepare something that they could take home. Uh, I, one more short one. But um, this year my class was reading various uh, fairy tales and their spinoffs. And after reading that, I added the three Billy Goats Gruff to my puppet area and I, um, the children were using them to retell the story. Within days of that, our school playground got remodeled. And during the remodel, they ended up putting in a rock climbing tunnel. And I went out there at recess time and my students were out there reenacting the three Billy Goats rock. My class was the only one doing it. The other ones were all off doing whatever, but I'm like, they're actually engaged in an academic task on the playground. So I could tell that my students definitely could um, provide me details from a story. Uh, and this last part, uh, kindergarten teachers are in high demand. Even securing a substitute for my particular school um, for kindergarten has become nearly impossible. Nobody wants to do it. Uh, the implementation of the rigorous standards in ways that are better suited for the intermediate grades have made it very difficult. The kindergarten experience has provided opportunities not only for <coughs> kindergarten teachers to network across the state, but also provided ideas, examples, materials, and their own time to show the kindergarten teachers of Arizona how to increase student engagement and learning from an appropriate, a developmentally appropriate perspective. I can't thank um, everyone enough for the endless hours of work. It is making a difference. Um, Jennifer Conley from Desert Sun. Now, Desert Sun uh, Child Development Center has a kindergarten program, um, and you're going to hear from their kindergarten teacher and their administrator. Now, they have been nationally accredited for, what, 20 years, over 20 years? 
Um, and so they had a lot of foundations already in place in terms of their classroom, but they allowed for us to come in and um, do lots of observation. And we've actually started to put GoPros on kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing videotaping of children actively engaged in the environment. And we're hoping to, to pull some data from that to be able to um, capture what children are gaining from their opportunities in the block area, the sociodramatic play areas, so that we can help um, uh, we can help spread this information across the across the state about how it totally aligns with standards. It's not something you do after the work is done. It is the work. So I, I want to invite up uh, Jennifer Conley, and she's going to share her experiences um, as she shifted as a kindergarten teacher in this program. Hi. Um, so I taught kindergarten for three years. And my first two years, I, I, did, I did the red light, green light system, and I would assign kids to centers for 15 minutes, and then we would ring a bell and everybody would switch. And um, there wasn't really much choice for them. I tried to give them as much choice as I could, um, and I tried to make the centers as fun as possible, but you could just tell that they weren't really into it. And then I started at Desert Sun, last year was my first year, or this year was my first year, and um, as a teacher, and it was so interesting because I, I went over the summer to all the trainings, and I was like, man, this sounds so nice. I really hope it works. Like, <laughs> this sounds like exactly what we need to get the kids interested in learning again. And so then I was like setting up my classroom, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to do this, like wholeheartedly put it all out there and let the kids have the freedom to choose the way they would like to learn and direct it that way and take where they are individually as a learner and progress at their speed. And it was impressive. Um, I never started with a behavioral chart. My kids, we started to learn what a school family was about and how to work as a team and build like a relationship with your kids, which you kind of forget that that's important. Um, and just a trusting, safe environment where they trusted you to learn and explore and discover again. And then my schedule, I have 90 minutes in the morning. We do a whole group, um, let's hug and sing and build our relationships. And then we do 90 minutes of learning centers and they are taking clipboards around and writing about their buildings that they're building because they want other people to know what they built. And I'm not, forcing them to write. They're writing on their own because they want to. And they're taking measuring tapes outside and measuring things and they're finding similar sizes and comparing and contrasting all on their own. And these kids, they're amazing at how much they can actually do on their own. And if we give them the space to explore in depth, it blows your mind how they can. And so what I do is I reflect every day on what standards we reached as a class or as an individual. And that's where I write it in my newsletter. Your child did this and this and this, and the parents are impressed. They're like, wow, I thought you were just playing. Well, <laughs> no. And yes, we are, but you learn through play and hands-on experiences. And that's what kindergarten's about. And you want these kids in kindergarten to learn how to be problem solvers and discover the solutions to things on their own. And that's why it's important to start this at kindergarten. So, thank you. And now we have Trisha, who is the administrator at this school, who has, like I said, let us come in um, and give our opinion <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Um, first, I want to thank the Lissy group and um, Isola and Debbie for coming in and really revamping our program and supporting us and everyone else too in the Lissy group. We feel very, very fortunate to be um, working with them. Um, and uh, I also want to thank Jen because Jen didn't tell all the background, but Jen was actually a parent at our school. And I saw her in the classroom interacting with the other children, and I thought, hmm, when, when she told me she was a teacher, I thought, one day. So she was actually an assistant in a classroom, and she still has very young children. 
Well, our kindergarten teacher decided after 15 years um, that she was ready to move on and do something different. So she left. So the day she said she was, she gave her two weeks notice, I called Jen in my office and I said, Jen, I have an opportunity for you. So Jen came in and she right away said, absolutely, I'm so excited. And the next day I said, and I have some trainings for you to go to. She was still an assistant but she was on board and she was there and she was ready to go. And she worked tirelessly all summer long to get her classroom and her environment the way she would like it. Um, and I have to say, I'm in a program that's pretty developmentally appropriate. And we've had kindergarten at our school for about 18 years, but the Alyssi group and the kindergarten experience has really taken it to another level. We really have had the opportunity to 100% pretty much be a child-directed, teacher-facilitated program. Jen has taken our program and um, aligned it with the standards. She goes to the standards every day and she puts out the opportunities for the children and she's there to support them and their learner, but they really are independent learners and they are engaged. And we've had kids that were in our, our kindergarten program that were some behavioral problems um, but they have grown, they are busy in constructive work and play all day long. Um, it is amazing as an administrator to go in and watch the children um, on the carpets writing, um, outside doing um, journaling and writing, and really um, meeting all those standards within an environment that they're enthusiastic about, they want to be there, they're excited, and um, they're ready to learn every single day. And the parents are excited about it. We were at our last training, um, and one of the parents, it was actually during our fall break, one of the parents texted um, Jen and said, what are you doing? My child's reading. And you know, the, the parents are excited. They see what's happening in the classroom. And um, so it really um, resonates with our whole community. Um, and I have to talk academics, are very very important and they're incorporated throughout the day in our program but Jen social emotional development is um, really um, tops she every day teaches breathing techniques she uh, does mindful breathing with the kids she has breathing buddies she um, talks about the community and how you're responsible for others um, we have a safe place in the classroom that children go to to help self-regulate if they're upset or if they're angry or mad and just need to get away from the group. Um, she teaches them how to problem solve, how to work things out, how to talk to each other, how to assert themselves when they are frustrated with their friends. Um, and it is just a true community to move forward. And again, to Dr. Helm as well for um, allowing us to learn more about the project approach. And um, if, if you have the opportunity to go to a training, I really um, would inspire you to do that. Thank you. All right, we have Katrina who is coming from Humboldt. Am I saying that right? Humboldt? Humboldt? Yeah, Unified School District. Um, who she was also a part of our pilot group. Come on up, Katrina. First, I just want to say it's been an amazing journey to be a part of this process with the Alessi group. It's been invigorating to me. Um, having been a preschool teacher in another state for over a dozen years, and then to shift back to my home state, it's been very, very invigorating to have been given that power again, to bring that into my school and my classroom, and to be a part of an amazing team. Um, and when we look at assessment, which is a scary word in some senses, um, but if we look at assessment through the eyes of a child and what they're learning, it changes. So I want to share a story with you about a child who I had who was mute, basically. Um, through learning about his background and pouring into his life from things that I've learned through this group um, and the experiences that you've been able to provide, 
this little boy moved from being mute to being able to be a leader in his classroom. We created projects um, from recycled materials that he took hold of and he led the way. Um, you know, is, is he capitalizing on every aspect of what he can offer right now? Not yet, but it's coming. And being able to get down on the ground and to look through a, a paper towel tube with him and to be able to talk to him through puppets, being able to take sensory materials and put his hands into the beans or to move the Play-Doh around in different ways, giving him the opportunities and experiences that he hadn't had has allowed him to explode. And he's not the only one. That's just one I want to share with you. Because when it comes down to assessment, authentic assessment, at the kindergarten level, you have to get down on their, their level. You have to be able to look at them through their eyes and if we're constantly giving worksheets, if we're constantly pulling them into situations that are not authentic, then we don't really get a true sense of who they are and what they can do. But when we step into their world and we explore with them and we listen with them, we get a true sense of what they're learning, what they're capable of. And I just wanna say thank you, Alessi Group and Dr. Helm Jimmy, um, for giving us the tools to reach the kids that sometimes get overlooked. And when it comes to assessing them, they're often overlooked. We, we push them aside, oh, they can't do that. But no, they can. They can take us to new levels. And um, the children in my class this year, they're, they're some challenging ones. But you know what, they're the ones that are gonna change this world. They're gonna rock us. And I can't wait to see in 20 years what they're doing, not to mention what they're gonna be doing next week. Because we have been given tools now and, and permission to actually assess at the level that they should be assessed. Um, learning happens through social development. And these kids are coming in and they don't have the social skills and we have to teach that to them, but we have to get down on their level. We have to connect with them. And I just wanna say that's been my journey um, back to my school, back to my classroom, back to these individual children and um, just the amazing impact that being able to authentically assess them and tell their parents, look what your child is doing. This is them, this isn't me. This is just me giving them the opportunity. So, thank you. Okay, we have Donna um, from the Pendergast District. Yes, did I say mm -hmm. that? Yes, come on up. My name is Donna Bateman, and this is my first year in kindergarten, but my 13th year of teaching. I wrote down some notes today when I was asked to tell you about my experience. I thought it was important to share with you that this program has changed me. So, and that changes my students. So, here's some ways that this program has changed me. So, first of all, learning in my classroom is real, it's relevant, and it's meaningful. It, gives, it gave me the opportunity to give up control. I am no longer in control of the remote to turn on the projector. I am no longer in control of the video we are watching, the go noodle dance that we do. They control it. So I've given up my control. We talked today about giving up control of the tape, of the sharpener, of the stapler. Those are no longer mine. Those are theirs. Um, something else. The students are the experts. They are the ones showing us how to do things. If someone doesn't know how to take the trash out for breakfast, it's someone else's job to show them how. These are things that I would have just done, and now I kind of just sit back. Something else, all power is given to the students. They tell me what they want to learn about, and that's what we do. I expect more, and my expectations are high. Things that my second graders couldn't do last year, my kindergartners do with ease. I read chapter books to kindergartners, and they love them. Sometimes I think they're not listening, 
Then the next day I ask them, okay, who can tell me what happened? And they know every single detail. When we journal, I say, go ahead and tell me everything you remember about the book. And they're like, well, don't forget to draw his glasses. And I, you know, what? He had glasses? Remember, they <laughs> fell off. And I'm like, oh, you're right. And so they are hearing those books, and they love the chapter book. Are you going to read it to us right now? No, we're going to read that this afternoon. So they're excited about it. Also, I think I forgot where the copy room is. <laughs> 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 I'm happy. Um, my teammate and I, actually yesterday, were laughing and having a good time and we were smiling. Her tire actually popped yesterday and I went to go check on her and go pick her up and I thought I'd find her crying, but because she was happy all day, the little things in life just don't bother us anymore. So those are the, some of the ways that it changed me. So let's see, how does that change the students? So increased vocabulary. The words I hear coming out of my students' mouths, I'm like, did I teach them that? No, they teach it to each other. Teamwork. If someone gets hurt on the playground, I'm turning around and I look and they're all putting band-aids on each other. And I'm like, okay, well that's nice. Should I, did you guys wash it? No, no, no I sent home a message. You might want to check that out tonight because I don't know if it got soap and water. Um, independence. Like I said, my second graders couldn't do things on their own. My Kindergartners can do things. Miss Bay. Where are we going to get the box from? Well, we have boxes over here. And then the next thing I know, I turn around. How do I start? Miss Bayman, can you? More to offer because of this program. Um, also, negative behaviors. I just don't see them anymore. If someone hurts someone, well, I'm pretty sure it was just an accident. He was just swinging his arms while he was dancing. It's not such a big problem anymore. All of a sudden, I'm no longer needed. My kids are happy. So, in, in all, this is because of the kindergarten experience. Today, I said, I was given a gift of a student that was very difficult. I also would like to say the kindergarten experience has been my gift, so thank you. It has given me a renewed passion that I forgot. It has given me an understanding of what my students are capable of. And it has also given me an inspiring group of professionals that you find in this room that are dedicated to their students and that have helped me collaborate and help me find new things to do. I think tonight we learned some great ideas about putting needles in a pumpkin to make a geo board on a pumpkin. These are great ideas that without this team, we never would have had, so thank you. All right, do we have Brandy here? Yes, there you are, yay! So Brandy is from the Deer Valley School District, and you've been a part of this group, um, or our experience since the inception as well, right? Come on up. Good evening. Um, first of all, I want to say, I'm so glad that Judith came to our school so that I could tell her about this wonderful program because I was one of those teachers that said, come on down, let me tell you about this new class that I went to because it's amazing. But um, the little background on me is I taught kindergarten for a lot of years and I had a really kind of difficult year. And it was one where I said, I have two choices. I either leave teaching altogether or I completely do a 180 and do something different. So my husband says, please don't quit teaching. Please, please, please do a 180. So I went to a completely different school, different socioeconomic altogether, and I taught fifth grade. I liked it because I'm one of those people that I take the challenge, take it and say, bring it on, I'm gonna learn something new, I'm always gonna find something that I can walk away and find you know, a positive note to. So I did it for three years because when I was teaching kindergarten, even though I loved it, my passion was with the, the little ones, I was, I was an EL teacher and I had this scripted thing that I had to do and to me it just, it fought everything in me and I, I just couldn't do it because it wasn't developmentally appropriate. My kids were 
learning about present permissive verbs on a chart and they're sitting there and they're repeating what I'm saying and they're not enjoying it. They're not learning. They're memorizing it. And it, it just it ate away at everything I was. And I said, I can't do this. I just, I consciously cannot walk in and do this anymore. So I went to fifth grade. I had a lot of fun. There are a bunch of, they're just kindergartners in bigger bodies. That's what I found out. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. But after three years, I missed, I missed my family. And to me, kindergarten, every day walking in, that's my family. That's where I want it to be. So I made a decision to go back there and I said, okay, but I have, I'm very specific. I want a certain school, I want to go to a certain place and the school I want to go to, they never have openings and I opened it up and they had an opening and I was like, this is it, I have to go. And I got the opportunity to go back and work for the same principal that I had worked with for five years when I taught kindergarten before. And I was like, this is it, this is, it's meant to be, I meant to go back. So I went in and I kind of got to start recreating myself as a teacher. And um, it was fun and I, I was practicing and doing, changing, doing things that I'd never done before. And I'm like, nope, that doesn't work. Let's throw it out. Oh, this one works really well. You know, kind of doing that. And then I get this flyer through my email and it was, says kindergarten experience, social emotional development. And I was like, oh, I like this. <laughs> so I went to my principal and I said, please. And she said, okay, because I am one of the lucky few that get to work for an amazing administrator that's been a kindergarten teacher for 25 years. And I am so completely supported that the day that she retires will be the day that I just cry buckets. <laughs> so, um, but she is amazing and she has supported me all along the ways, which little do you know that right there is like the biggest thing that you can have because if you don't have the support, you can't try the things, you can't do the trials that you wanna do, but I have been able to do that. So I went to the social emotional thing and I walked back into my classroom on Monday and I ripped down my behavior chart and I took away all my center stuff and I said, where's the kitchen? And they said, I don't know, it's somewhere in a, in a room in the 300 building and I said, give me the keys. And I went digging and I found it and I was, my kids were in specials and I'm lugging this dirty sand table across campus and I'm like, I'm doing this. I went to Home Depot and I bought sand and again, my husband goes, there goes my paycheck. <laughs> and I said, yes, it does. <laughs> and um, I did. I, I started small. That, that year I got to do sand tables and I got to take away the behavior chart and I got to start treating my kids on an individual basis and not as a whole. And I started looking at it. Then the following year, I changed my centers. I brought in uh, more blocks and more kitchens. And then my second year, I attended more classes, the organization one on centers. Got this great, amazing book that it's been great. And little by little, and this year I made the power change. I took away name tags on the tables. They don't have assigned seats, they sit where they want to. Their faces and their names are everywhere on my walls. And it's their faces and their artwork that decorate my room that they walk in. And I have parents that walk into my room and say, oh my gosh, I love this, this feels so happy. And that's the way I want it to feel. I have a student the other day that turned around and said, Mrs. Martin, I absolutely love school because I get so dirty. <laughs> and I, I was like, you get dirty, that's great. He goes, yeah, because and if you knew this kid, you saw him, he comes in, his hair slicked up, he's wearing his little GQ outfit and his matching shoes, and he's perfect. And he goes, I get so dirty, and I get to play with worms. And I'm like, yes, we get to play with worms, and we get to play with sand, and you get wet, and that's okay. We play with oobleck, it's gooey, it's yucky. I mean, that, but that's what it's about being a kid. Um, I'm sitting there working with a student the other day, and I look over and I'm like, what is going on? And I've got all these chairs around a round table and all of my kids are underneath the table. And I'm, I think, hold on, I'm gonna listen to this. I'm listening. They're building a storm shelter because one of the moms and dads got a new stereo system and they watched Twister. And so she decided to come in and they built a storm center or storm storage thing. And they had food storages. They were, um, I mean, they had, they're like, take care of the babies. I mean, they had blankets around. It was amazing to hear the vocabulary. And I was like, I never even talked about twisters, you know? And I looked at them and I said, what is a twister? And they're like, well, it's a couple of things. I twist my hair, but mostly in this movie, it was a tornado. And I'm like, okay, cool. Turns around that I have a little tornado thing, put two little bottles on it. Let's talk about tornadoes. So it kind of led where the direction of what we went. And it was awesome. So, and I had another one that came in and he's building blocks and he's got this big thing and he comes over and he goes, look, he goes, I built Charlie's uh, chocolate factory, but look, this is his river and it goes down and I have this ramp because if I don't, then it's going to all back up and overflow and that's not going to be good. And I'm like, this is amazing. 
this is where I want to be and this is the difference that I'm making. They're teaching me every day and I love that. I love that they're saying these things to me. Um, it just, it's been the coolest thing ever to do it. I wanted to do the pilot so bad, but you know, we all have that tendency of saying no, or yes, 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 I'll do this, I'll do this. And then finally something was like, I can't, I can't. So I had to kind of back away from that and I'm so sad, but I will be attending the class. I already got the permission from my grand master. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I just I just have nowhere to move but forward in this. It's been one of the most amazing, energizing experiences of my life. My family at home laughs at me all the time because um, I call them my mates and I say things and they're like, why do you do that? And I say, well, don't you know that practice makes perfect? I practice on you guys so it becomes my habit. And then when I go to my classroom, I don't make those mistakes. My eight-year-old came up and tattled on her older sister and I looked at her and I said, are you being helpful or hateful? She goes, I hate that you're a teacher. I know it, right? She walks away and she's going, I'm being hateful. And I said, that's right. So it's one of those things that it's not just in my classroom, it's my life, it's, it's with my children, it's with my neighbors. Um, I even had fun with kids on, you know, they come to my house on trick-or-treating and things like that. It's just, it's changed my perspective on everything and how I talk to kids and how I, how I just do everything in my own life. And so it's, it's been awesome. And it's just, and I thank you for that because this has been an experience that I'm no longer looking at and saying, oh my gosh, I have so many years, uh, 80 points to, you know, to retire. It's like, oh gosh, I get to do this for 10 more years. It's so amazing. Oh, I get to do this for 15, you know, however long I have. And that's the way I look at it is that I get to do this and, and I'm in my school and I am building and building and building everything. And I, I, I guess I have so much energy that I have parents that are donating money to help me and I've got sand tables and water tables. I'm building a stage as soon as I can get my husband to get a saw out and we're gonna build a stage. I have put in a grant for a garden. I put a grant in for a uh, classroom pet. I have to wait for the garden. So I found an old wagon in my backyard and we planted a garden in my wagon on the playground. So it's like you can find things to do. You just have to be creative and dig in your backyard. So you find all kinds of things in there. So, so anyways, I just wanna say thank you because it has been an amazing, amazing experience. stories of teachers and how this has, um, it, it, there, and I continue to say this, I feel like this is a grassroots effort and that it's the teachers that are making the difference and um, their experiences and we want to continue to build a, a sense of community among kindergarten teachers and administrators that we, we, we need to start having conversations with one another about uh, children and, and be, help one another stay inspired and excited about the work. Now, um, we have a parting gift for everyone, and I want to tell you a story about this. So, we, there's a term, and let's see if t the teachers know this uh, term that I use. It's real, it's relevant, and meaningful. meaningful. It has to be real, relevant, and meaningful in the lives of children, the experiences that we offer to them. And what we decided to do after much uh, deliberation and, and um, we decided to make necklaces and keychains with the three stones that say real, relevant, and meaningful. Um, Regina is a hiker, and she said, that's a kern. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Cairn, okay, I, I'm not a hiker, obviously. But a cairn, and so you find these stones when you're on a trail, mm -hmm. and then the, it, it, it's an indication that you are on the right path, yes? And so we thought, this is perfect, it's perfect. And so before you leave today, we have, um, we have the, what, what my definition of real, relevant, and meaningful, and a photograph of a cairn. <laughs> a cairn, a cairn, oh, I'm never gonna get it. Um, but uh, to help remind you um, to ensure that we are uh, creating opportunities for children that are real, that are relevant, and that are meaningful in their lives. And I wanna open it up if there's anyone else who would like to share an experience that they've had or would like to say a few words about um, about the kindergarten experience or the project approach. Don't be afraid. <laughs> I just uh, did a project. Uh, <laughs> I've been teaching in the classroom uh, 14 years in my in my current district, and um, I just felt the other day in my classroom doing projects with my kids and making that 
that covet time because you have your assessments that you have to do and there's those non-negotiables. But my afternoon with project work is my sense of time with my kiddos. And that's the time where I'm building relationships, they're problem solving, and to see them excited about asking questions and not knowing where that, pro where that next fork in the road's gonna be and where we're gonna go with that project. It really brought teaching to life for me again. And I felt kind of dead inside and I hear all my, all these other kindergarten teachers about wanting to leave and I'm like, this is all I know. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to leave the field, but I, I know what I've been doing in the past wasn't working. And our children are come to, coming to us different. This generation that we have, we can't do these things that we've been doing in the past where it's just paper and pencil. And we have to, we have to make these things relevant and really focus on those 21st century skills. And as a parent myself, I, my kiddo is in first grade, but I think of him as a little widget trying to conform to the school requirements. But this project approach, now as a parent, I wanna go home and do it with him. Mm -hmm. So he loves learning because if, if I don't do the change, my kiddo's not gonna love to learn anymore. And that's why I'm a kindergarten teacher, because I love learning. And so, uh, so thank you, thank you, because I taught preschool too, and I forgot about all those wonderful experiences and how they need to be concurring. To early childhood is just not those first three years, it's that whole span from birth to age eight and we have to focus on that whole child and that brain. We have the research now to support what we're doing. And so thank you guys for bringing that back. <laughs> well, with that, I wanna thank you all very, very, very much for coming and being a part of this group with us. Um, help us continue to build momentum and, and to get, we really wanna get across the state um, the reality of our circumstances is this grant is, um, we're probably only going to be in existence for about two more years. So we really need to reach out as much as we possibly can and you are the ones who may, are making this happen. Um, so thank you all once again. Um, thank you to the Alessi Group and, and Dr. Judy harris Helm for coming out and supporting us. We still have food out there that we paid for. Um, I'm not saying to put it in your purse, but... <laughs> but please feel free to mingle. You do not have to leave at this point. With This is kind of our mingle mix. We have teachers who probably, if they don't need to leave here tonight already, um, can also share their project with you for those of you who just, just came in. So thank you all very, very much for your support. Yeah, okay.